So I think that the second edition of the Bean Atlas of Africa contributes to conversations on climate change and climate variability in five important ways. So firstly, the Atlas gives an overview of the current climatic constraints to production. Lack of soil moisture continues to be the most widespread climatic constraint in sub-Saharan Africa. And in the Bean Atlas, we map um, three different types of drought. Drought early in the growing period, mid-season drought, and terminal drought. Version two of the Atlas shows that um, drought is widespread. However, some areas are particularly affected. And these include Eastern Kenya, Northern Tanzania, and much of Ghana. And apart from drought, we know that heat stress, um, especially at night, um, can reduce pollination and it affects other bean reproductive processes. Now, heat stress wasn't included in the first version of the atlas. And in version two, we can see that it's affecting um, production in diverse areas of, of sub-Saharan Africa, from Buenza in the Republic of the Congo, um, to central Malawi, and to northwest province of South Africa. So the second way in which the second version of the Bean Atlas affects this conversation is that we now include models of changes in suitability for beans um, looking forward, so looking over the next 10 to 20 years. Now our models of um, suitability for um, beans suggest that temperature is more important, it's a more important driver in the location of beans than rainfall. Uh, climatic projections indicate that by 2030 there will no longer be any areas which are very suitable for beans, um, but there will still be many areas which are suitable, such as uh, much of Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, the Kenyan highlands and, and much of Cameroon. By 2050, um, areas which are suitable will have reduced even further due to climate change. Now, the third way in which the Bean Atlas will affect, will contribute to uh, conversations on climate change is through our mapping of, of bean commercialization and the bean corridors. So any changes in the suitability and in production of beans is going to have a knock-on impact on all the other players in the bean corridor and in the bean value chain. Uh, these could be traders, aggregators, processors, uh, and eventually consumers as well. So if we can combine our, our projections of climate change, our assessments of changes in production on the bean corridors, we have a good idea of seeing what changes need to be made to um, ensure that consumers can keep on getting good quantity and quantity of beans as well. So moving on to the fourth contribution of the, the new version of the Bean Atlas to conversations on, on climate change and security. So I think this is via the tools and the media uh, that we're using to deliver our data and analysis in this second version. So tools such as web mapping, from which you'll, you can use to, to query the Bean Atlas. Now these weren't available in 1998 when the first version of the Bean Atlas was produced. Um, viewing the Bean Atlas on a, on a browser uh, means you don't have to have um, GIS software, which you would have had to have done had beforehand. And it also means you don't need the same extensive GIS skills that you would have needed beforehand. Um, similarly, our maps and our analysis have benefited from access to higher resolution data than were available before. So data such as for soils, for climate, and for elevation. And these have improved our uh, bean production maps in their precision and in, the, in their accuracy. And finally, I think the fifth way that the second version of the Bean Atlas can, can contribute to, to conversations on, on climate change and security is that it gives an indication of some of the adaptations 
the smallholder farmers, extension systems and bean researchers uh, can implement to deal with a changing climate. So for instance, uh, the Atlas tracks the release uh, and adoption of Im improved bean varieties, um, some of which, uh, such as the variety KAT Bean 9, were bred for drought tolerance. Uh, also, the Atlas can show us how practices um, which allow smallholder farmers to cope with climate change and extremes are spreading throughout Africa. Um, practices like intercropping and agroforestry systems. So we can see where they've been adopted and we can track the success and see if they'll be relevant for other locations, other similar locations. And maybe the last resort for bean production, uh, looking far into the future, uh, would be to seek new production areas, um, perhaps in higher elevation areas uh, such as the Ethiopian hi highlands. And the atlas shows which areas will still be suitable in 20, 30 years, uh, giving the agricultural systems time to respond.